Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So, welcome to, I guess it's another daily video, but I actually have some toys that I want to show you guys. Um, I think it's, it's quite exciting. So, what I did is I actually raised some monsters. You see my Astro Gem count and my Gold count being very, very low. I'm probably going to have to be a leech for <laughs> this upcoming Clan Fest again. Um, I know I said I wouldn't, but I... I just, I, like, whenever I have this, like, really fun project that I want to work on, I, I can't help myself. So, today I present to you, um, I guess this is Project Radis. Now, I, I have three light radises here. Um, this one only has 94% crit, um, but this one and this one both have 100% crit. Now, all three of them are on crit rate double attack on Siphon. And I'm going to be using them for um, Golem's V10. So, they basically just have a bunch of attack. Uh, they have around the same amount of attack. Some of the, some of them have slightly higher than others, but most of them are have the same amount of attack. Um, this one's probably the one with the shittiest gems. Now the other thing, the the main reason why I'm so broke is mainly because um, you know all of them, <laughs> yeah, all all of them are max skilled, um, completely like you know level five skills on all three of these. Light radices, and I, I raised them, I evil three them. I farmed a lot of them on the um, the last map, so I finally raised them. I never got around to doing this, and I think I want to try using this to like farm golden speed ten for a while, and I I think I can get some pretty pretty sick runs. So I've been doing some tests, and I think I think the results are pretty good. Um, so I'm I'm not gonna talk too much about it. I'm just gonna show it off. Now I'm using the light vic to provide um, a, a attack lead. And if anyone's curious, I might as well show her gems. I can't talk today for some weird reason. It's just triple defense also on siphon. Not really any good substats. Um, but the siphon is is the main part. Is the is the important part. All right, all right. Let's let's let's. Let's do this. Now you might be thinking, uh, since they're so, since they have like no defense at all and it's just like pure damage, pure attack, and you're even using an attack lead, wouldn't it be risky on the first wave? And I can say yes and no at the same time um, because using a team like this actually has a pretty high requirement it requires your gems to be like the reason why the 100 percent crit is pretty important is because with the attack lead on siphon with 100 percent crit with the exception of the dark moon flowers um the radices are able to one shot anything um, with a single hit so the the way i make it stable is like you know even if there's a moon flower left alive or, or two moon flowers left alive um the the way i make it stable is they most of the time they would one-shot anything on the first wave in a single attack, and this way, um, oh my god, oh shit, I didn't, I didn't kill him. I, did, I needed to land one more sap. So sad. All right, but this is this is pretty good. Um, now I make it stable by just basically if I one-shot like one or two monsters, then there's only two left alive. And now, even if those two monsters still attack one of my light radices, they might have a chance to kill them if they're dark, both dark moonflowers and they crit. But the chance of that happening is relatively low. Plus, plus, um, I've also tested if one of my radices do actually die on first wave, I'm still able to clear the stage no problem. Um, mainly due to the siphon, because once they have the siphon, or once they have a full bar, um, and they go into the next wave with a with a full you know full bar siphon, they'll just clear the whole entire wave um, with their AOE as well. So. I don't really have to worry too much about that. Let's uh, let's try again. So that's one of the reasons why this this team is like I did I did a lot of test runs actually I already already did like a hundred runs um, and it's it's a hundred percent stable like it hasn't it hasn't failed yet. Um, and it's just basically you have to push through a th certain threshold. Like there's there's risky when you go like full damage, but then when you go like so much damage that you're one shotting things, they can't even have a chance to fight back. Then you go past that that threshold and it becomes stable. Um, so yeah, this is this is uh, this is an idea actually. I I got from from I can't remember who. Someone was talking to me on Discord, um, recommending that I I do this. Originally, I was thinking of making the radices somewhat tanky, and he's like, "Don't do that. Just go full damage, and like with enough damage, you'll just one shot the entire wave." 
and that's that's basically what I did. So, yeah, you just give them a shit ton of damage, put them all on Siphon. Um, and the only way you can really do this is you have to have 100% crit on Siphon and you need an attack lead um, to be able to pull this off. So you, you need pretty good gems. That was a 55 second run. I think that's pretty, that's pretty fucking good. YouTube. Oh my god. I, I just, I just swore YouTube's going to demonetize me. I'm going to get de demonetized. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I I wish it could be more exciting, but that that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show this off. Like, <laughs> there's not too much to talk about it. Um, it's just the the trick is simple. You get a full set of siphon on three light radices, and you have them all 100% crit. Now one of them doesn't have 100% crit, but there's only like a six percent six percent chance of it fucking up. So it's not too bad. Like it's just you know, the, there, there isn't room for error there. But even if it does happen, um, it doesn't necessarily cost me, like, you know, a, a loss run, um, even if he doesn't crit on one of his attacks. Like, it's not the end of the world. And even if one of my radices do die, um, the other three units are able to kill the golem in time. Because even, even if you're not able to kill him in two turns, um, most of the time you're going to be able to land enough saps to kill him in three turns. And if, like... It, in really, really bad case of RNG, um, it might take four turns. But you know, with the with the radices being max skilled and with the golems resist being the way it is, uh, most of the time you're just gonna land that many saps on him. Especially if you have like you know at least two radices attacking him. If you have three, it's just no question he's gonna fall down really, really fast. Um, so I think it averages to around a minute runtime. The absolute limit of how fast this team can go is 52 seconds. I th I think. Because um, with with the run being 52 seconds, what could happen? Like in order to achieve 52 seconds, what they would have to do is they would have to kill two monsters with a single attack on first turn, and then with another attack, um, they kill another two monsters on second turn. So they don't even use their AOE. And then for the th third turn, um, they AOE down the second wave. For the fourth turn, they AOE down the third wave. Um, for the fifth turn, they AOE down the. I think there's only two waves. Oh uh, yeah, so for the fifth turn, they uh, they they land um, like a lot of saps on the boss, and then the boss takes some sap damage that brings them to like a re under fifty percent health, and then they um, attack again and land a lot of saps. So basically, you kill the you kill the boss, or you, b you finish Golem's B10 within six turns. If you can do that, you can achieve fifty two seconds um, of runtime. Now I think it might be possible to get lower than that. But it needs to basically you can't spawn any like moonflowers on the first wave, and um, all four of them have to attack different units. So basically, you clear the first wave in one turn, and then on the second wave, like one of them has to get lucky enough to get all the blue souls and have his siphon up and clear the whole wave. So like there's a lot of RNG factor involved in order to get a five turn run. But I think most of the time you can you can definitely pull off a six turn run. And even if it or not a six turn wait. Yeah, six turn run. Um, even if you can't get a six turn run, you can still get a seven turn run, which um, goes to about a minute and ten seconds if it's seven turns. Because the difference between a six turn run and a seven turn run is is actually quite large. Because I think this was an eight turn run because it, it, I think it took me three turns to clear the first wave, and then second wave, third wave, and then boss took me three turns. So this is an eight turn run. So it's a minute and twenty seconds. Uh, a seven turn run takes about a minute and ten seconds. And actually, a, a six turn run actually goes even lower. It actually goes to around like 55 seconds, um, or 52 to 55 seconds, depending on the, um, on the on the animation time. Or actually, it depends on where you got the extra turn, because sometimes it could take you three turns to clear the first wave, but only but you still kill the boss within two two waves. So that's like that goes to around 55 seconds to around a minute. Um, but if you if you have like a, or, I mean a seven turn run like that, but uh, um, for a seven turn run where the, where you spend three turns on the boss, the boss does that really really annoying like really slow animation where he like pounds the ground three times, and if that does happen, it actually wastes around another five seconds, which brings your time run time to like a minute and ten seconds. Um, 
My math is fucking bad. Don't don't like just just don't, okay? <laughs> I can't I can't calculate. Oh man, it didn't kill the bee. It was supposed to kill the bee. Alright, so this should be a... Uh, this is at most... Um, it took me three turns to kill the first wave. And then it's going to take me two turns to kill the boss. So that's it's at most five. Uh, and then like two more turns to kill the wave. So um, this is at least a seven turn run. Already. Actually, wait, no. It took me... Yeah, it's, it's at least a seven turn run right now. Now, if I land enough saps against this boss, it's it can be a seven turn run. Um, but if it takes three turns to kill the boss, and then it'll, then it'll be an eight turn run. I think this might be an eight turn run. I don't think I can land enough saps on this turn. Oh, he went to attack the side unit, rip. Oh wait, no, never mind. We still kill the boss. That was lucky. So this was a seven turn run. Um, a seven turn run where I spent three waves on the f on the first wave. So this was around a minute. A seven turn run where you spend three turns on the boss will take around a minute and ten seconds. Um, there's a f a bit of difference between the the run times because sometimes like you get these like I don't know sometimes like the units some of them like lag behind and attack slower than others. You see that happen sometimes on when when you turn on auto, so it's not like a hundred percent stable. I think it also has something to do with like internet where they send in the time, and it's like you know there's a bit of lag. It's like a, f a second or two behind. Um, so I think there's a little bit of difference there, but it's it's around a minute or so if you get a seven turn run where you spend th where you spend um, three turns on the first wave and you kill the boss in two turns. Um, if you spend three turns on the first wave and three turns on the boss, that's a that's an eight turn run, and that'll be like around a minute and twenty seconds. If you have a seven turn run where you spend three turns on the boss but only two turns on the wave, then that will be probably around a minute and ten seconds. Um, and then if you want to go even faster than that, then it's a it's a six turn run where you um, clear the first wave within um, you know within six turns. And there's also a chance of that happening as well, where the the units die to sap. And it's, it probably adds like a, a second or so, or second or two on top of your runtime, but it's it shouldn't matter too much. Now this this kind of wasn't that good because some of them didn't get their AOEs up on the first wave. I th I think no no they they none of them got their AOEs up on the first wave because um, of just really bad blue soul RNG. So they actually spent two turns on the second wave, which is the equivalent of probably spending three turns on the first wave. So they spent two turns on the f on the second wave and two turns on the first wave. Um, so this is still a this is still a seven turn run if they land enough saps to kill the boss before the boss gets his AOE off. So this should be around a minute and ten seconds. My math is bad. Fuck me. <laughs> Wait, was that a seven turn or a six turn run? I think it was a seven turn run. Seven turn runs go around a minute to a minute and ten seconds. Oh wait, no, no, uh, I, I was I was mistaken. It should have been a minute. This was right because uh, because you only get a minute and ten seconds if you spend three turns on the boss because of his like really slow animation attack speed thing. Um, it literally wastes another ten seconds of your life, or it wastes about seven seconds, and then you like three seconds is like you attacking him. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Oh, oh, this all right, all right. This is a pretty good chance to show uh, what happens when one of your radices die. And show that it's still stable, even if the radis dies on on the the second turn or on their first turn. If like you're just super unlucky, and then they have like a dark moonflower hit both your radices, and this is why it's so good to have them both on siphon. Because they always get their bar full like this, and then um, they just basically clear the wave, so it doesn't matter what spawns. And this will show that they're um, with three units, you're st still able to kill the boss. It's actually quite rare where one of your radices die. Um, normally, it doesn't happen. It basically takes two moonflowers hitting the same unit and and both critting in order for for them to uh, to kill one of your light radices. 
um, which is a relatively low chance of happening. Now you see the boss has four saps on him after this turn. Um, he'll have two more one turn saps and he has less than 5% HP, meaning that he's going to die for sure. And your Victoria is relatively tanky, so as long as you landed a few saps on the first and second turn, um, your Victoria will be able to finish off the golem, so like on the third or fourth turn. Um, so yeah, there's no problem there. And when one of your units die, I think that it was like a, I think three turns on the first wave, um, and then like three turns on the boss. So this was like an eight turn run where the boss actually got his AOE off. Um, so it took a minute and 26 seconds, but this this happening is, is actually, it's actually pretty rare for this to happen. But even if it does happen, it's still stable. You can still kill it. Just you need like, you need some you need some sick damage on your uh on your radices. I'm probably going to go back to farming jacks for a little while and then like I think at least until I can make another light jack. And then I, I actually want to farm golem for a bit and see if I can make some resources to summon like pull like maybe one or two times for clan fest. Um just so I'm not like 100% leech. Actually wait if I just pull twice, I don't think it does anything. I have, to, I have to farm enough to pull five times, which I don't know if I can make before uh, before Clan Fest. But with this team, I might be able to farm gems much much faster now. But anyways, that is that is pretty much it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I uh, just wanted to show this to you guys really really quick. I'm quite excited. I don't think I have anything to summon, and if I do, I don't have a lot, so I probably should just should just save them for next time. Yeah, I'll save them for next time. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.